Hi, I'm Grant Price, Product Manager for TechSpray Desoldering Wick. I'm going to demonstrate how to use solder wick and show you some tricks to improve your desoldering technique. Desoldering wick, also known as solder wick, wick, or desoldering braid, is a common method of removing unwanted solder using flux and braided copper wire. It is commonly used to aid in removing faulty components, to correct solder bridging, or any other reason that solder needs to be removed. Wick is used by everyone, from the massive printed circuit board factories all the way to the beginning hobbyists. Wick is relatively inexpensive and simple to use compared to other methods of solder removal. It is also safer on components than vacuum desoldering devices as less heat is applied to the component and the heat is applied for a shorter period of time. TechSpray is one of the most commonly used brands of desoldering wick in the world. Let's look at the steps of using desoldering wick. Step one is to choose the appropriate size of soldering wick and soldering tip for the solder to be removed. Choose a width of wick that is similar in size to the glove of solder to be removed. Using wick with a significantly different width will make the solder removal more difficult. It is usually beneficial to keep several different widths at your workstation. That way, you're ready to desolder anything that you may encounter. Additionally, choose a solder tip that is reasonably close in size to the width of the wick. Next, you'll need to choose a wick with the appropriate flux type. The most popular series of tech spray desoldering wick is the No Clean Flux series. This series pulls up the solder extremely fast and cleaning the board after desoldering is optional and based only on aesthetics of the board. Tech spray part numbers starting with 1820 through 1825 are in this series. We also have a series of rosin flux wick known as the Pro Wick series. Part numbers starting with 1808 through 1813 fall in this series. If you have a requirement that you use a particular flux or that you use an organic flux, choose unfluxed wick. You will need to add your own flux as you desolder in this case. Unfluxed wick has a part number that starts with 1830 through 1833. Each of the series of wicks that I have mentioned are wound onto static dissipative bobbins to eliminate any danger of static charge being generated or transferred from you to the circuit board. Now let's see how to desolder. Step one, place the wick over the solder to be removed and then place the hot soldering iron over the braid. Step two, place the tip at an angle that maximizes heat transfer through the braid to the solder. Use a clean tip that you have just tinned with fresh solder to maximize heat transfer. Heat will be moving up the copper, so be careful not to burn yourself. Step three, apply slight pressure and wait for the solder to melt. Don't get in too big of a hurry at this point. Allow the tip to dwell long enough on the wick to heat the wick and then the solder on the other side. You will see the wick begin to absorb the solder. Hold the tip and the wick in place until the wicking action has stopped. Step four, remove the wick and braid at the same time. Removing the iron before removing the wick can cause the wick to become soldered to the board. If that does happen, reheat the braid so that you can remove it. Adding a little extra flux to the joint before applying the heat can make the job even easier and faster. This will also help to make an older spool of wick work like new. Once the wick is saturated with solder, trim it off and move to a new piece of wick for your next desoldering. Sometimes there is a small amount of solder that is difficult to melt. This happens occasionally when the solder is left in a through hole after removing the lead. Applying heat long enough to get down into the hole and melt the solder could damage the board. Instead, add a good amount of solder back to the area. Then, put the wick over the new solder and remove it the same way as previously described. The additional solder acts as a heat bridge to the tiny amount of solder that was hard to reach. So it is all absorbed at one time. Next, I'm going to demonstrate removing solder from around a lead. We go through the same steps, but we put the wick up against one side of the lead. Place the solder tip over the wick and the solder will pull up from all the way around the lead. This can be a good time to add more solder to the joint if not all the solder is wicked up. To remove solder from large areas, for example, the pad after a BGA chip has been removed. First, you're going to want to choose the widest wick available. Next, choose a tip with a very broad surface area. 
A knife tip works well for this, but you can also choose any tip with a broad surface area. Step three, lay the braid all the way across the solder to be removed. Step four, place the tip on one end of the braid. Move the tip slowly along the braid to melt and wick the solder as you move. Lift the wick as you move so that the braid doesn't adhere to the board. Thanks for watching. For more information, please go to techspray.com or email us at tsales at techspray.com.